Today's video is kindly sponsored by Care Of. Get 50% off your first order with my promo code Kendall Ray at TakeCareOf.com. Oh my gosh, you guys, we have a lot to talk about today. So I'm sure many of you have been following the Valo Daybell saga. It's probably the most talked about case in true crime this year. And recently there have been some huge developments. I've gotten so many messages from you guys, so many comments asking if I've seen the updates and yes, Yes, I have. A lot more information has come out in the last couple weeks and a lot of information has come out in general since I last covered this case, I don't know, a couple months ago. If you are one who has been following the case from the beginning, maybe you heard it on my podcast or somewhere else, this news was really heartbreaking. I feel like many people, including myself, really were holding out hope that the kids could be out there alive, being kept somewhere, maybe a bunker. That was something I brought up a lot in my last video that I thought maybe it's possible. And I think that really was, like I said, wishful thinking. So if you have not heard the news, JJ Ballow and Tylee Ryan's remains have been found. I'm gonna go over all that, what was found, what we know so far. But before I start, I want to go over just kind of an overview of the case in case you haven't heard all the details yet or in case you need a refresher because this is such a confusing one. Also in this overview, there's gonna be a few new bits of information that have come out that are really bizarre. If you wanna skip the overview and you just want to hear about my thoughts on the latest information that has come out, go ahead and go to the timestamp listed right here and I'll also put it in the description box. You can click on it and it'll take you right there. But let me try to do a somewhat quick overview of what has happened up until now. So the Vallow family was living in Chandler, Arizona. Lori had been married a few times before and she had a daughter from a previous marriage named Ty Lee. And she also had a son named JJ Vallow who was not biologically hers. He's in the family, it's kind of complicated, but she adopted him. And she had a husband named Charles Vallow who was a father to Tylee and JJ. In the end of 2014, Charles and Lori moved to Kauai, Hawaii, and they opened up some type of juice bar situation. But while they were in Hawaii, Lori ended up meeting this guy named Chad Daybell, who is a weird fuck. He's a writer and he's known for his series called Standing in Holy Places. It's a series of five books that are talking about how the current world is coming to an end and how we're struggling and how LDS members are going to deal with it and prepare for the end of the world. He's got a lot of thoughts. He's got five whole books. Plus he's also got a podcast. You know what Chad kind of reminds me of or who he reminds me of? L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology. I see so many similarities with the two of them. But anyway, like I said, he had a podcast. It was called Preparing a People and it was talking about the end of the world and what people can do to save themselves and how to prepare for a transition into the new world. Again, I wanna point out that Chad Daybell is a radical Mormon. His beliefs do not actually align with the Mormon faith at all. He is an extremist. So extreme that he thinks he has special powers to talk to the dead. He was also kind of a psychic or a prophet. Like he would have dreams and tell people that he knew what the end of the world was gonna look like because he saw it in his dream. He really believed he had special higher powers and that he was some type of chosen one. I've recently released my autobiography entitled Living on the Edge of Heaven where I tell more about my two near-death experiences and how that prompted me to write my novels. Chad claims almost dying left him with one foot in the spirit world, the other in the physical world. He talks about dozens, if not hundreds of visions. That's a lot of clues, right? Those are absolutely clues. His books go on to say the world will end with earthquakes and hailstorms, floods and fires. He believes the U.S. government will require humans to receive microchip implants and that the country will be invaded by Chinese and Russian forces with help from the United Nations. So in June of 2015, Chad and his wife Tammy purchased a house in Salem, Idaho. The reason they moved there is because Chad was hearing voices and he claimed they were telling him to move to Salem. Meanwhile, in 2017, Charles and Lori decided to move back from Hawaii from their juice bar to Chandler, Arizona. They continue on with life as normal, except for Lori is still fascinated in Chad Daybell. Then on December 5th, 2018, Chad and Lori met in person again. 
Lori is also into the doomsday stuff and she was really into what Chad Daybell had to say. And so they both went on that Preparing a People's podcast together a couple times. So Chad and Lori were perfect together because they both believed that they were some type of gods and had super powers. Not only that, both of them think that they lived thousands of previous lives. And Chad even thinks that in seven of those past lives, he was married to Lori. And Lori really liked this idea. She thought it was very romantic that they had been together in previous lives and they were that bonded that they found each other again in this life. Not only that, he thinks in his past life, he was Martin Luther, who was a religious figure. So Chad told Lori that he had a vision that he and Lori were chosen by God to help lead the second coming of Jesus Christ. And now their main objective was to recruit as many people as they can, help educate them, and help them understand that the world is going to be ending as we know it. Of course, they don't call themselves a cult, but a cult never calls themselves a cult. Lori had become part of Chad Daybell's cult. Chad even told Lori that about 144,000 people would be meeting in his backyard for the second coming. One new bit of information that has come out is that Lori and Chad actually got married while they were still married to other people. They snuck away to an LDS church and did some type of sealing ceremony. I don't know if that's an official thing, but that's what they were calling it. And it essentially means that the two of you become married and bonded for life and for eternity, multiple lives. So fast forward a little bit to February, 2019. Charles Vallow decides he is gonna get a divorce from Lori because she is completely off her rocker at this point. She is totally into Chad's whole cult and she's secretly married. Now, one thing that's important to know about this case is that Chad and Lori believe in light and dark spirits. They believe that there are people on the planet who are no longer their actual spirit inside. They are now a zombie instead. And normally it ends up being the people that are inconvenient to Lori that become zombies. So Chad had told Lori that he thought that Charles, her husband had become a zombie, which is very convenient for him, right? This is when Lori started thinking, and she told Chad this, that she thought the real Charles had already died and he was replaced with a zombie. Now, according to them, the only way that you can revive someone from being a zombie is to kill them and then their true spirit will return. Also during this time, Lori was starting to really scare some of her friends because she was telling them some whack ass shit. So at 5.30, what you're seeing here is a body camera video recorded before his death. It reveals new concerns from Lori Vallow's late husband, Charles Vallow. Well, in January of 2019, Charles Vallow called police saying his wife Lori drained his bank account, stole his truck, then took off with the kids and locked him out of their house. Now, officers helped him break into his home where a distraught Charles talked about Lori's radical religious beliefs and how she wanted Charles dead. So what makes her a danger to herself and she to others? She threatened me, murder me, kill me. She threatened to murder you? Yes. You don't know if she posed a threat to your children. I don't know what she's going to do with them. I don't know if she's going to flee with them. She's going to hurt them. She was really into the whole light people versus dark people, dark and light side. And she had a whole list of celebrities and elites that she thought were on the dark side. And she said there was one person, one celebrity that was the head of all of the dark side. Can you guess who it is? None other than Oprah Winfrey herself, ladies and gentlemen. So Charles has had enough of Lori at this point. She's spewing all of this bizarre stuff to him, acting really strange. So he ends up moving to Texas. So Lori decides that she needs to go to Texas to make sure that Charles has his finances in order. Basically, Charles had a $1 million life insurance policy and she wanted to make sure that it would be going to her and not his sister. So Lori ends up leaving Texas with both kids with her at this point and goes back to Chandler, Arizona. So then in July of 2019, Charles Vallow came into town and went to Lori's new place to pick up JJ. Now at this time, Alex Cox, who's Lori's brother, is staying at her house with her. I went into this in a lot more detail in my last video, so go check it out if you wanna hear more about this, but they got into some type of altercation and Charles apparently had gotten a bat and Alex shot Charles in self-defense. 
but if you watch his body cam footage, he seems very unbothered. It doesn't seem like someone who just got in this really bad altercation and killed their sister's husband. And what is the emergency? Uh, I, I shot my brother-in-law. Okay, what part of his body is injured? In the chest. Okay, is he awake and responsive or unconscious? Unconscious. Okay, is he breathing? I can't tell. Okay, are you wanting, are you willing to go over to him and check? Sure. Okay, do you just let me know if you see his chest going up and down? How old is he? It's not moving, he's 60. Okay, and are you wanting to start CPR? No, I don't know how to do that. I can walk you through it. Okay. Yeah. Have a seat. Yeah. You have some ID on you, sir? Yeah. What happened today? How did it get to this? I don't know, he was enraged. What's going on? What happened? No, what happened today, though? Like, just in the oh, last 20 just, minutes. He came to, He came at me with a bat. Okay. He, was he, he living here or no. visiting? He came to pick up his son. But most people assume that it's not true that Alex actually just killed Charles because Lori wanted him dead because she thought he was a zombie. The family of Charles Ballow think this was a premeditated attack and it's currently being investigated. And exactly what Lori didn't want to happen ended up happening anyway. All of the money from the life insurance policy ended up going to Charles' sister. So in the following weeks after this, Lori, JJ, Tylee, Alex, and Lori's niece, Melanie, all moved to Rexburg, Idaho. Now this is very close to Salem, Idaho, where Chad lives. Lori claims that she moved because she got a job opportunity there, but we all know that's bullshit. She just wanted to be close to Chad. So on September 24th, 2019, Lori ended up unenrolling JJ from Kennedy Elementary School. They thought this was really weird. It was really sudden and the school year had kind of just begun, but she explained that she wanted to homeschool him instead. Then on October 19th, Chad Daybell's wife, Tammy, who he has a bunch of kids with, also died. Chad had actually previously stated that he thought she was going to die soon. Like she, he had a vision about it. Her death was very, very sudden. And it's very weird considering Lori's husband also died, but Tammy was completely fine. Her family said she was very healthy, active. She had no reason to just drop dead all of a sudden. So she was buried without an autopsy being done. However, when all of this started coming out and things just looked so sketchy and all these people have died. They decided that they needed to exhume her and the autopsy results from that have not been released yet. So we have no idea how Tammy Daybell truly died. But just a few weeks after Tammy dies, Lori and Chad get together, they go to Hawaii and they get married and they have this big ceremony. They have pictures taken, they're frolicking around. Meanwhile, at this point, we don't know where Tylee and JJ were. So November 26, 2019, Larry and Kay Woodcock, who are JJ's grandparents, decide to call the police and have a welfare check done on JJ because they haven't heard from him, they can't get a hold of anyone, can't get an answer on where he is. So the police showed up at Lori and Chad's place. This is when Lori tells them that JJ is actually in Gilbert, Arizona, staying with a friend. Now this friend is also named Melanie, not to get confused with the other Melanie, that's her niece. And Chad calls up Melanie and tells her that the police are gonna be calling you and we need you to lie for us. He told her, we need you to pretend that JJ is with you. Lori even suggested that maybe she go take a picture of a group of random friends at the movie theaters and pretend he's somewhere in the group and send them that picture. But Melanie refused to do this. She was like, what the fuck? And she ended up calling the police and telling them that Lori and Chad were making her lie. Another interesting thing that Melanie has recently spoken up about is that she also had called Alex Cox before he died and asked where the kids were. And apparently he said, you don't want to know. So the next day, the police decide to go to Lori and Chad's place because they know that JJ is not at the friend's house. This time they had a search warrant. However, Lori and Chad had already gotten the hell out of there and went back to Hawaii. They checked the flight records. They saw that they did not have the kids with them when they went. So they know that they went alone. So they're in Hawaii. Meanwhile, police are trying to build evidence and they're keeping a distant watch on them. Then on December 12th, 2019, Alex Cox ends up randomly dying. In the medical examiner's report, they said that he died of natural causes blood clots and heart issues. Melanie actually believes that maybe he died from stress 
Maybe he knew exactly what happened to JJ and Tylee and that he was getting stressed out that maybe Melanie would go to the police. So on December 20th, 2019, police officially announced that JJ and Tylee were missing to the public. On January 3rd, the police did a huge search on Chad Daybell's house. They looked at cell phones, documents, all his computers, took a bunch of evidence from the house. And a few weeks later on January 25th, police served Chad and Lori with documents saying that they needed to produce the children in court or provide physical evidence that they are safe and well somewhere. The day after this, on January 26th, Lori and Chad were driving around Hawaii when they were pulled over. And in their rental car, they found both JJ and Tylee's birth certificates, JJ's school registration, his iPad, and Tylee's debit card. So it really doesn't look good. Can you tell me where your kids are? Where are your kids? No comment. No comment? They've been missing for four months. You have nothing to say? You're over here in Hawaii? Chad, where are Lori's kids? Why have you guys been in Hawaii for so long? Listen, just tell people what's happening. There's people around the country praying for your children, praying for you guys. Why don't you give us answers? That's great. That's great. That's great that they're praying for you, praying for your kids, what? You have nothing to say? Did you do something to your children? Are your children still alive? That's a simple question. I've got three kids of my own. I can tell you every minute where my kids are at. Where are your children? So of course, Lori fails to provide evidence that the kids are okay, fails to provide the kids. So on February 20th, police finally arrest Lori in Hawaii. Breaking news overnight in the case of those missing Idaho children, their fugitive mother has now been arrested in Hawaii, held on a $5 million bond. Overnight, Lori Vallow, the mother of two missing Idaho siblings, arrested by authorities in Hawaii. The 46-year-old seen here being brought in on a warrant issued by Madison County, Idaho. Her husband, Chad Daybell, photographed nearby as his wife enters police custody. Chad, any comment on Lori getting arrested? ABC News finding Daybell following the arrest, returning to the condo where the two have been staying. Vallow's arrest comes three weeks after she defied a court order to physically produce her children. Now she's facing multiple charges, including two felony counts of desertion and non-support of a dependent child. According to the police press release, Vallow was also arrested on investigation of resisting or obstructing officers, criminal solicitation to commit a crime, and contempt of court. Her bond was set at $5 million and was eventually reduced to $1 million, which she still couldn't pay. So she has been in jail this entire time. Soon after she was in jail, the news came out that Chad and Lori believed in this whole zombie thing, these light and dark beings, and that it's quite possible they thought Tylee and JJ were zombies. So since my last video, Chad has been free. I mean, there was nothing to arrest him with yet, and Lori has been in jail. So let's get to the most recent news. On June 9th, around 7 a.m., officers arrived at Chad Daybell's home in Rexburg, Idaho with search warrants. Police say that they had noticed areas on Chad's property on the ground that looked like they had been disturbed. So they ended up digging. And I guess the reason they hadn't done this sooner, because a lot of people were very critical about how long this has all taken, I guess it was like too frozen. I mean, they're not in the fucking tundra. I don't understand. I feel like you still could have dug into the ground. But anyway, they said that they were waiting until the snow melts. They had to wait till June. Anyway, after digging on the property for only a few hours, they did find the remains of JJ and Tylee. Police arrived at Chad Daybell's house Tuesday morning with shovels and backup, 20 members of the FBI. Investigators uh, discovered um, what appeared to be unidentified human remains uh, and an autopsy will be uh, conducted. Authorities were carrying out a search warrant connected to the disappearance of the then seven-year-old JJ and 17-year-old Tylee. Chad was just watching all of this from his house, and at one point, after the first set of remains were found, Chad actually hopped in his car and tried to get the hell out of there. Of course, police followed him and pulled him over and arrested him. At first, news got out that two bodies had been found and all of us really assumed it was them. First, it was confirmed that JJ was one of the remains and a couple hours or maybe a day later, they confirmed Tylee was the other set of remains. And this is just heartbreaking. These cases are so hard, especially when you get so attached to them and follow them for as long as a lot of us have been following this case. It's hard not to get emotional when something like this comes out, especially when 
we all wanted to stay hopeful, you know? I was really hoping that maybe they would be found, you know? Maybe they were being kept in this bunker and maybe that explains Lori's just bizarre behavior. To me, she seemed almost like she thought the kids were okay and there's nothing for everyone to worry about and she's literally just trying to protect them because the end of the world is coming according to her in July and I thought maybe she was actually trying to protect them in a bunker somewhere, I don't know. It's just hard to imagine that this mom who was described for a long time, I mean, how well did people really know her, right? But a lot of people described her as a really attentive, caring, loving mom who loved her kids. But this just does not add up. She knew that they were dead this whole time. It's really, really sad. I mean, Tylee was so young. Both of them are so young. Tylee was just at that age where she was about to go out into the real world and start her life though, you know? And JJ, he was so cared for by his sister. She loved him so much. She really took care of him. They both had lives to live and because these psychos decided that they are zombies, they lost their lives. And I don't even wanna think about the details about what happened to them. This one has just really messed me up. I've had nightmares about it. It's just so upsetting and scary. And not only that, news came out recently that Chad actually used to be a fucking grave digger while he was a student in BYU. So obviously there's a lot of questions still, but it really does seem like Chad possibly was the one to dig their graves and get rid of them, possibly with the help of someone else. So it turns out that Tylee's remains were burned. She was dismembered and her body was found in different areas on the property. And JJ was found wrapped in plastic and duct tape. And this was so heartbreaking for the Woodcock family. Um, I think they probably knew deep down that they were gone, but it's just, Having that reality slap you in the face has got to be so painful. I'm not coming in hostility in any way. I, I come with trying to be the peacemaker, and that's all I want. I just want to be a peacemaker. I want, let's all get along here. Let's see where, where JJ was. And, and, and to say, if I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're all with you. I just want to give you my condolences. Yes, I, so, I am so terribly sorry. I'm okay. so sorry. I watched the whole process yesterday, and it's just, it's heartbreaking, heartbreaking what's happened to us. And y'all don't deserve this. Well, Nobody. neither do you. Yeah, I'm just saying, uh, this neighborhood. <laughs> I mean, really, and, and, and you've the lost your grandchildren. <laughs> I can't imagine. No, it's not about us. No, it isn't. It's about no. them. This has torn up so many people. It's destroyed people. It's torn up whole homes. And there's no need for this. So like I mentioned in my last video, the last place that Tylee was seen was Yellowstone National Park. Alex, Lori, JJ, and Tylee all went to Yellowstone together. And the next day, September 9th, they found some really strange pings on Alex Cox's cell phone. From 2.42 a.m. to 3.37 a.m., Alex was at Lori's apartment. But then just a few hours later, there was a ping at 9.21 a.m. at Chad Daybell's property. Now this tells us a lot. It's quite possible that Alex Cox was involved in the death of JJ and Tylee, or at least involved in getting rid of their remains. They were able to figure out that Alex was at Chad's property for two hours. At 11.53, he left the property and they think he only buried one set of remains at this time. And apparently on the same day, Chad texted his wife, Tammy, who was still alive at this time, and told her that he found this big raccoon on the property and shot it in the middle of the day, which is weird because oftentimes raccoons are really out at night. But anyway, they had a pet cemetery on their property because Tammy like loved to bury animals that she found dead on her property. She really loved animals, so they had a little pet cemetery. So he said he shot the raccoon and he was out burying the raccoon in the pet cemetery. It's very possible he said this as like a cover um, in case Tammy found out what was going on, which there's been a lot of question about how much did Tammy actually know. But it really seems like he set it up so that Tammy wouldn't ask why he was digging on the property. Also, one of Chad's neighbors has spoken out about how he saw a pile of bones next to the fire pit in Chad's backyard. This is right where the kids 
were buried. So the pieces are kind of all coming together here. As of right now, Chad and Lori both say that they're innocent. They probably still think the world is coming to an end pretty soon. I mean, they said July and it's so funny because every time I bring this up, there's always so many comments from people that were like, I wouldn't be surprised if the world did end in July. Like with the way things are going in 2020, I don't know, but it seems like they still have this arrogance about themselves. Like they know something that everyone else doesn't and that they are prepared in a way that no one else is. And we're all kind of just fools and sheep going along with everything. So Chad and Lori are at least both in jail where they belong. But the big question is who actually killed the kids? Who was involved and in which part were they involved in this crime? Was it Chad that actually did it? Was it Lori that actually did it? Was it Alex Cox that actually did it? Or was it all of them together? Or was there someone else involved that we don't even know about yet? Police are still trying to figure all that out. So there hasn't been murder charges for Chad or Lori yet. There probably will be murder charges eventually. It just does take time. I know people are frustrated. They want to see them go down now, but this does take time. And this has just been such a mess from the beginning. I mean, this story is wacky. This is another, you know, Casey Anthony, Jody Arias level case. This is a massive, massive case that we're gonna hear about for a long time. In the past few weeks, there was a candlelight vigil for the kids. People all over the world are heartbroken by this story and have been following this case and none of us wanted to see it end this way. The day she went missing, she told me, she's like, I love you. And I said, I love you too. And then like, I never texted her or saw her again. My best friend's been missing since September and I really need to go and like mourn her and everything and I need to go to her vigil and I'm going to need to go to her funeral and everything because I really just need to get closure because it never really hit me that she was gone. I'm really happy that people are here to support them and are here to mourn them and like give their support and care for them because they really do deserve the best and they deserve to have that love because they were the sweetest people in the world. But at the same time, I know that we're closer to justice now. I'm glad that bodies at least have been found and hopefully we see the law come down on Chad and Lori as hard as possible. Chad's preliminary hearing has been scheduled for August 3rd, 2020. His bail is also set at a million, so he will be in there. And Lori's next court appearance is supposed to be sometime in July, but everything's so wonky right now because of the virus. So this is definitely gonna be one that you're just gonna wanna follow as things come out. I do updates on my Twitter if you wanna follow me, it's Kendall Ray on YT. And as any information comes out, that's where I will be posting about it. I probably won't do another video on this for a while, possibly until an actual trial starts or even afterwards unless anything major comes out or else I'm just gonna keep going over the same information every time but I want to know your thoughts on this what do you think happened what do you think is still not come out yet who do you think actually did it and whose idea was it I know a lot of you probably have a lot of thoughts and opinions on this or maybe you've heard something that I haven't heard yet there's so many little bits of information kind of slowly leaking out everywhere so let me know if you've heard something interesting that I didn't mention in this video but before I go this video was kindly sponsored by care of demonetization on true crime videos has been insane lately so I really appreciate sponsors like care of sponsoring this type of content and I was super excited about this because I love care of and care of makes it incredible incredibly easy. They give you these little packs that have everything that you need in it for you. See, mine says, hi Kendall. And here I have fish oil, a probiotic, ashwagandha, a multivitamin, zinc, vitamin B, vitamin D, everything that I need right in one simple pack. And it's so easy to take all those and not have to open each individual bottle. And if you want to learn more about vitamins, you can actually take a short five minute quiz on their website and answer questions about your diet, lifestyle, and health needs. Care of will recommend vitamins and supplements specifically for your needs and goals. And you'll get your order shipped straight to your door. So if you want to get started, you can take their quiz and find out what supplements would be good for you. Go to this link to get started with your quiz and get 50% off your first order with code Kendall Ray. That's it for me today, guys. I hope you're having a good day. Stay safe and I will see you next time.